here we are. Easter in the midst of the pandemic. This is probably unlike any Easter that most of us have experienced. With everything still being so fresh, with us still being so very much involved in it all. You stop and think about it, the other maybe great events of our lifetimes that seriously affected us or caused us to stop and take a look. I was thinking about it. They're all, they were all in the fall or the early winter. 9-11, of course, was in September. JFK was shot in November. Stock market crash was in October in Pearl Harbor in December. But here, we're still very much adjusting. And we're adjusting in lots of different ways. Not the least of which is hopefully keeping our sense of humor. Easter this year, no matter how uncertain, no matter how grim our life situation, our world might be, it has to be joyful. And even if the joy takes some, some strange ways, I received a, a cartoon from a friend of mine in Eugene just this afternoon. And this cartoon, it shows a police car it was driving along and the Policemen, of course, had their masks on. They were, you know, being protective. And it was obviously a place where the stay-at-home ordinance was in place. And they were driving by. On the one side there, there was a cave. It was the, the tomb. And the stone had been rolled away from the front of it. And you could just see Jesus starting to take one or two steps out of the tomb. Police officer sticks his head out the window and says, don't even think about it. So, we do have Easter. Even in difficult times, maybe especially in difficult times. It's so important because it is us. It is what we are all about. Again, this was just sent to me this afternoon by a member of our, our parish staff. Um, I guess it came to her on, on the internet. Um, many of you may have had this sent to you already. If you haven't, I'm sure you will in short order that these things seem to spread faster than any type of virus seem to. But this is how the virus stole Easter. And this is with a nod to Dr. Seuss. It was late in 19 when the virus began, bringing chaos and fear to all people, each land. People were sick, hospitals full, doctors overwhelmed, no one in school. As winter gave way to the promise of spring, the virus raged on, touching peasant and king. People hid in their homes from the enemy unseen. They YouTubed and Zoomed, social distanced and cleaned. April approached and churches were closed. There won't be an Easter, the world supposed. There won't be church services and egg hunts are out. No reason for new dresses when we can't go about. Holy Week started as bleak as the rest. The world was focused on masks and on tests. Easter can't happen this year, it proclaimed. Online and at home, it just won't be the same. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the days came and went. The virus pressed on, it just would not relent. 
The world woke Sunday and nothing had changed. The virus still menaced, the people estranged. Poo poo to the saints, the world was grumbling. They're finding out now that no Easter is coming. They're just waking up. We know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two, and then all the saints will cry boo-hoo. That noise of the world will be something to hear. So it paused, and the world put a hand to its ear. And I did hear a sound coming all through the skies. It started down low, then it started to rise. But the sound wasn't depressed. Why, the sound was triumphant. It couldn't be so, but it grew with abundance. The world stared around, popping its eyes. What it saw before it was a shocking surprise. Every saint in every nation, the tall and the small, was celebrating Jesus in spite of it all. It hadn't stopped Easter from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the world with its life quite stuck in quarantine, stood puzzling and puzzling, just how can it be? It came without bonnets. It came without bunnies. It came without egg hunts, cantatas, or money. Then the world thought of something it hadn't before. Maybe Easter, it thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Easter, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, the story's not done. The churches are empty, but so is the tomb. And Jesus is victor over death, doom, and gloom. So this year at Easter, let this be our prayer as the virus still rages all around everywhere. May the world see hope when it looks at God's people. May the world see the church is not a building or steeple. May the world find faith in Jesus' death and resurrection. May the world find joy in a time of dejection. May 2020 be known as a year of survival. But not only that, let it start a revival. One of the reasons why I think this Easter feels unique is because our Lent, our time in the, the desert, our time of things not being normal, is continuing on. And it's not, hasn't been for us a 40-day reality. And it's been something where we have had to take it seriously. But the resurrection of Jesus tells us and any of my students who took freshman theology from me, they should know this backwards and forwards. The love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. And that's what the resurrection of Jesus shows. Jesus took upon himself not just our sins, but all the sin, all the sinfulness, all the evil that creation has ever known. It's like it all ganged up on Jesus in the ultimate battle and it killed him. And evil, and especially the evil of death, said, it looks like we won. God said, I'm just getting started. I can work with what you've given me. You have given me death. I will defeat it with new life.
you have given me hatred. I will conquer it with greater love. You have given me sorrow. I will conquer it with incredible joy. And so, in the resurrection, new life comes from death. Growth comes from suffering. You look at these last several weeks, and yes, it's been hard, it's been a struggle. It's been an adjustment. For many, it's been very fearful, frightening. But everybody I talk to, long distance, of course, agrees that there is some amazing things that we as human beings are showing. We are letting some of the best inside of us come out in terms of caring and compassion, in terms of creativity, in terms of generosity. That's resurrection taking place in the midst of suffering. That is new life. That is our growth. And ultimately, we have the promise that what we see in small ways now, we will have in the greatest ways for all eternity. Because the power of God's love is the most powerful force in the universe. The resurrection is not just Jesus' victory over death. It is our victory over the small deaths, over the small sufferings in our lives. It's our victory. And just to remind me of that, I even tonight made sure to wear my Bronco Victory socks just to reaffirm. So we have all of this. question I think maybe is going to be are we going to let it mean something when finally whenever it might be there is a cure when finally when life gets back to normal whatever that is for us will it be a new normal Well, the ways that we have learned to appreciate our family, the times that we have been spending together, will that continue on? Will that spirit of generosity and compassion and connectedness that is God's gift to us in this time, will we let that continue? A quote I've had for many years, a woman named Joan Putoff said, there's a certain amount of discipline in staying risen. There's a certain amount of discipline in staying risen. We have the life, we have the growth, we have the promise. But it's going to take our commitment, our insight, our prayer, our hope, our joy to keep that alive. It's going to take us looking at our lives through resurrection glasses seeing new possibilities, seeing things in different ways. 
This is one of my favorite stories. is by Dr. Charles Garfield. If you've ever gone to a toll booth, you know that your relationship to the person in the booth is not the most intimate you'll ever have. It is one of life's frequent non-encounters. You hand over some money, maybe you get change, you drive off. I've been through every one of the 17 toll booths on the Oakland-San Francisco Bay Bridge on thousands of occasions and never had an exchange worth remembering with anybody. Late one morning, headed for lunch in San Francisco, I drove toward one of the booths. I heard loud music. It sounded like a party or a Michael Jackson concert. I looked around. No other cars with their windows open. No sound trucks. I looked at the toll booth. Inside it, the man was dancing. What are you doing, I asked. I'm having a party, he said. What about the rest of these people? I looked over at other booths. Nothing moved there. They're not invited. I had a dozen other questions for him, but somebody in a big hurry to get somewhere started punching his horn behind me, and I drove off. But I made a note to myself, find this guy again. There's something in his eye that says there's magic in his toll booth. Months later, I did find him again, still with the loud music, still having a party. Again, I asked, what are you doing? He said, hey, I remember you from the last time. I'm still dancing. I'm still having the same party. I said, look, what about the rest of these people? He said, okay, hold it. What do those look like to you? He pointed down the row of toll booths. I said, they look like toll booths? Brother, you got no imagination. Okay, I give up. What do they look like to you? He said, vertical coffins. What are you talking about? I can prove it. 8.30 every morning, live people get in. Then they die for eight hours. At 4.30, like Lazarus from the dead, they reemerge and go home. For eight hours, brain is on hold, dead on the job, going through the motions. I was amazed. This guy had developed a philosophy, a mythology about his job. I could not help asking the next question. Why is it different with you? You're having a good time. He looked at me. I knew you were going to ask that. Someday I'm going to be a dancer. He pointed to the administration building. My bosses are in there and they're paying for my training. Sixteen people dead on the job. While the 17th in precisely the same situation figures out a way to live. That man was having a party where you and I would probably not last three days because of the boredom. He and I did have lunch later, and he said, I don't understand why anybody would think that my job is boring. I have a corner office, glass on all sides. I can see the Golden Gate, San Francisco, the Berkeley Hills. Half the Western world vacations here. And I just stroll in every day and practice dancing. That's what I mean when I say there's a certain amount of discipline in staying risen. We live the promise. We share in the new life of the resurrection every day in our lives. Let's remember Let's not go backwards. Let's not settle for the way we were.
because Christ is raised.